So now we've got our quadratic regression. We have an equation that uh, kind of like approximates the graph we had before. Um, and now let's take a look and see how they compare. Um, not this one. This is not the calculator I want to use. Uh, I'm going to take it, this guy right here. All right. So I'd like to show you a drawing that, but I can only show you what it looks like now. So you see the, the old data is like uh, this. And you can see there's some of it overlapping here. But for the most part, it's a really good approximation, isn't it? So I'll be kind of happy with that and impressed. OK? So now I'm just going to go and I'm going to turn off the, uh, the data we collect, and we'll just use the graph. Um, the graph of the, the approximation, the quadra quadratic regression that we found. Okay. So it's just the parabola right there. Um, and let's see, we've got the equation is right there. So the equation for this graph. All right, so it's a big, nasty looking equation. But um, now what we have is not just a collection of data points, but a really good approximation of probably where that ball was in between. Like at any moment in time, we could know pretty close how high it was off the ground based on the data we collected. Um, so Gavin, what are we going to do with that? Use that and we can find like infinitely close points or at least as close as you can get between, well, just a little bit farther in time. Right. And a little bit before in time. Like one point and we'll find the correct estimate of this week. Yeah, exactly. Um, or at least that's how we're going to start. So let's say, um, you don't want to know. Let's say we were to zoom in this little section of the problem, which we could do, and I would do if it weren't so clunky to do it this way. Um, if we were to zoom in and, and, and look at that time, which is a time we actually kind of have data for, right? It's interpolated from that data. We could get smaller and smaller and smaller. We could zoom farther and farther in, get tiny like intervals, and calculate slopes that are closer and closer and closer to the slope that we want, right? OK, big mile marker here. Are there any questions about what I've said so far? No. Yes, Sarah? Don't you use an approximation for the equation capital A versus slopes? I mean, So, so you're saying that this graph yeah. is not exactly what happened? No, no, I'm just okay. saying. Okay. Um, the extra decimal points? No, um, it's just that <laughs> the equation is so complicated because there are many numbers. Oh, there. you're asking why it looks complicated? No, I'm just asking why don't. Oh. So why don't we go back here and make it a little bit nicer, like maybe go just 0.43? Just to make it better. Yeah. Just to make it nicer to look at? No, not just to make it easier to use. Uh, 
to make it easier to use? Well, the calculator will do all of the number crunching for us. No, I, and if you ask these guys, they'll tell you that I don't love calculators, but they do do great things, and we can talk about this, this issue. We will, when we, we start to do this on a regular basis, not use such complicated looking equations. But it's cool because this represents something that actually happened for, which group was this? Does anybody recognize their graph? No? They all look the same. It's pretty similar. No, it's not that. It's not they wrote down theirs. So you voted for ours, though. So. You voted for yours. It's not yours. It's not yours. It's not yours. It's not yours. So, is it yours? Ours had like a. Yeah, it wasn't ours. Ours wasn't yours. Second one to go. Is it yours? It wasn't yours. No, it wasn't yours. Thank you, it was yours. It was ours. Who used point one? It was yours. Did you use point one? Point one increment, so it probably was yours. Okay. Anyway, so this really closely represents what actually happened for this group over here. Um, now, let's see. Let's get some good time left. So, what we want to do, though, is. Not, not specifically like Gavin laid out a, a good plan to do what we want to do. What is it we're trying to accomplish? What is like the question we're trying to answer? What is find the speed. Find the velocity at one point, not between two points. So what Gavin is suggesting, and I love that Gavin thought about it and he brought it to class and he has an idea. Um, his idea, and I want more if you have more that are uh, even slightly different from this, he said, basically do what I did in green here. Zoom in closer and closer and closer. Use points that are really close together and maybe surrounding the point that you want. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Surrounding the point? So if we want to know, let's do. Uh, Can we just do an approximation? Like, yeah. like approximate as close to it as we can possibly get. Like yeah. Right. Like in the table, you plug in, like say that was at point three. Like you can uh -huh. you type that in like on the graph. Or the table, um, three point zero 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 yeah. zero zero yeah, yeah, yeah. And one, and then two point nine nine one, and then uh -huh. and then the yeah. Limit. So, so your idea is to do something like this. Say this is x, right? And this is uh, right here is maybe like x plus point zero 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 one, right? Yeah. And this is Maybe x minus point zero 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 one, right? Just a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left, and that is. We're not going to go to the left and the right. I'll try to make that clear off the bat. Um, though maybe there's a great way to do that. Okay, but the way we we do it traditionally is is we'll stay with this as the left and we'll only oh, yeah. step to the right a little bit to get a second point. Okay. Um, any other ideas that are different, a little different than that? Does that have anything to do with what we did at the end of the year, your life, like what made you? Yeah, look very it? much so, yeah. Oh um, gosh, oh, I remember that. I can't remember. When group, what group was it? I think it was, is your group? Um, yeah, Kendra Hurden. Kendra. Kind of did that, like a little bit to the left, uh, the slope from here to there, and the slope from point out of the slope from here to there and the slope from there to there and averaged it, yeah. which is another good idea, right? The slopes can't be all that much different between those two things and if we average them, it's got to be close and it will be really close, but it's not going to be exact, okay? Um, Take this and uh, shrink her back down. Uh, oh, the line. We'll do that. Okay. Um, so just make one of those. Bring that over here. Okay. So here's what I'd like somebody to do. I'm going to get a, a tool here that. Um, Make a straight line. 
it'll make it from beginning to end. Oh. And here's what I want to do. Let's say at, well, let, let's, let me maybe get on the calculator and, and see what values of time are, are close to there. So we will just going to hit trace here. Go with right there. So I'm going to take a snapshot real quick. And we'll open this back up. And I'm just going to close, I'm going to get rid of this. And bring this guy over. OK. Take my pen over there. So I want somebody to come up. I want you to take this straight line tool and draw the slope. Draw the slope of this graph at this point right here. Exactly. So we can draw the slope between two points from here to there, from here to there, and so on. But what's the slope of the graph at this point? So it's just going to be your best that you can do. It's not going to be exact. Do that. Gavin? Well, I was asking like a question. What is the slope? Okay. You got a question? I have a question. Okay. Go, Ryan, go. Okay. Just draw the slope of that graph. Just like extend that, that slope out. Where's the extra credit bucket thing? Extra credit bucket? The uh, where is it? Blocks? Where is DOS box? I don't know where it is. <gasps> I don't know if it moves this way. But we could. I could find it. I could just run it. Yeah. I'm going to have to look for it. <laughs> uh, just give him like 30 minutes. OK, that's great. That was, uh, that was Ryan. OK, good job. You can sit back down. Yeah, uh, you did good. Good. Oh, okay, explain what you were thinking. Explain what you were thinking. Kendra knows. So if that line is touching the parabola, it can only touch at one point if it's a perfectly straight line. Yeah. It's called a tangent. It's called a tangent line, right? Yes. Okay. And if you imagine, if we were to, <laughs> if we were to zoom in, like I, I showed you on this other shape here, story. if I were to zoom in closer and closer and closer and closer, oh, which I think in the days of iPads and iPods and zooming, you could imagine that pretty well. Uh, what's this, what is that, what, like that tiny little screen right there, what's it going to look like? The line between one point. It's going to look like the line that Ryan just drew, the tangent line, the line that touches it at that one place where we want to know the velocity, right? Now the problem is we have no other point on that line. That line only touches the parabola at one place, so you can't get two points that are on the line and on the parabola. Can't do it. It won't work. Okay. You use that line to get the slope for that one point. Yeah. What's that? You use that line to get the slope for that one point. The thing is, though, here's the problem. We don't know what that line is. We don't know what the slope of that line is. We don't know another point on that line. Mm -hmm. All we can do is just draw it like Ryan did. You know, looks good. Looks close. Mm -hmm. But we know that the plus is good good good. X or Maybe next year. Y. So we have. We can. We do have one point on the line. We don't know anything else about the line. Like technically, officially, we don't know anything else about the line. Only that it looks about like this. We don't know anything else about it. Okay. So what we're going to do now in the next few minutes is realize that we need something more. And we're going to have to go back and like build up this idea and we'll, we'll revisit this. Um, and maybe use a simpler equation like Sarah was suggesting, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use an idea, kind of like Gavin's. Uh, we're gonna use an idea um, that I, I started to explain, okay? Let me, let me draw it in general. Here's a graph, here's a parabola, or really any, any graph at all. 
And we want to know, say here, at this point, what, what do we want to know? How fast, well, what's the velocity? Which, so the graph, yeah, so the graph, the picture of that, that curve, we just need to know the slope, and if we know the slope, then, you know, depending on what variables we're using, yeah, we'll be finding the velocity in this case. So we want to find the slope What's the slope at x? Exactly the slope at exactly x. Not between x and some other point, but right at x. All right. So what I'm going to outline out for you now is just uh, how it's done traditionally. Okay? How we teach it. If you come up with some other ideas, that would be fantastic. Uh, this is just the way that uh, probably is the simplest to understand, and it's just been taught for so many years. Is how we teach it today, and I like it a lot. Okay? So. What Gavin suggested was take a point that is a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right and find a slope between those two. Let those points get closer and closer and closer until, you know, hey, what's the difference? Yeah, they're pretty much touching. Okay? We're going to do just that except for the point on the left is actually going to be right here. Okay? And we'll pick a point slightly to the right of that. Right? Okay. So just to illustrate the point further, we can pick this point and find that slope. Is that slope close? Yeah. Closer than slope, say, over here. Yeah. right? But it's not nearly as close as we want it to be if we want to be exact. right? OK, so we want to pick a, a point there. Is that better? Yeah. That would be better. This would be better. That would be even better. That would be better. What's, what do we want those points to do? Touch. We like oh. them to touch. What a weird idea to find two points that touch, that are pretty much the same point, and find the slope between those two points. That would be weird, but that's what we're going to do. OK? So this is f of x, right? That's a function. We call it f, and the independent variable is x. Um, so what we're going to do is pick two points. There's, say, point 1. And we'll call this point 2, and we'll kind of imagine uh, what is point 2 doing. It's, yeah, we'll move point 2 closer and closer. Okay, so we're going to just describe point one and point two in general. Okay, so point one is at what? X. X. X, right there, right? That's that X, comma, comma Y, right? But we can be a little more specific because we know what this function is. And so if we, if we, if we have that function like we do here, we have the function here. We can actually find the y value. So instead of just saying y, like how would we, how do we find this y value given this x value? You put this x, put this x value into that equation, and you get out this y value. Right? So to say that more generally, we say let let's let's not make this confusing. We just really call this function f. Okay, it's got a name. It's called f. Okay, this is f of x, because this is the point we're specifically calling x. We put it into f, and that's the y value, right? So this implies that what we're doing is taking x, putting it into a function, doing some calculations, and finding a y value. OK? Now let's take down to there. Um, what should we call this thing, right? x x junior prime. x prime, x2, x, you know, x to would be fine. OK, so this is uh, x2, OK? Function, we're going to function, take the function and plug x2 into it and find the y value. OK, that's two points in there. Uh, it's a little messy. Here's, here's what's going to make it uh, nice and neat, OK? Um, instead of calling this x2, we're going to call this distance. Can you remember this? It's yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. It's h. Or, oh, or delta x. Right? What does delta mean? Anybody yeah. know what delta means? Just g. Huh? Just g. Who said g? How do you know that? English. Yeah, English. From English? <laughs> no, partly, but over the summer we did some exercises with people. They're like, things would change, things you wouldn't, and they said delta. 
Oh, okay. Well, in in physics and math and lots of different places, uh, delta represents a change. It's just a Greek letter that represents change. So the change in x, right? Change from here to there would be a horizontal change. It would be an x change. So delta x is a change in x. But h is easier to look at and, and, and mess around with. This almost looks like two variables. This is clearly just one. Okay. So then this would be x. Then what could we call this x value rather than just introducing some arbitrary x2? That's right. x plus h. x and then h more, that'll get us there. Okay. So this point, you know, gets, that's my little symbol for it, gets transformed into, well, x plus h. Yes. And f of x plus h. Oh, Mr. Okay. Uh, Stewart, um, is this where we did like the rectangles last year? Did the rectangles? Like no, that's, that's later. Area. That's much later this year. Oh, uh, uh, That seems like what this was. It's they're related, uh, in as much as uh, they're related to the limits. There's limits involved with both. Um, okay, so now if we wanted to find the slope between this point p1 and this point p2. How would we do that? How do you find the slope between two points? That's right. Over. We can call it. We can call this y two, right? Minus y one. Let's just do that one a little. Y two and y one over x x plus h minus x. Right, and this we can call x2, and this would be x1. Now what happens when we, when we do this here on the bottom? What do we get? H. H, x's cancel, they go away, and we get just x. So our, our new expression looks like this, just over h. All right, so that's nice. That, that kind of takes all that stuff, puts the slope finding into a nice little concise expression. So if we had any x, okay, this is x, any x, so that would be a point where we want to know what? The slope. The slope, velocity, whatever the rate of change is. Um, this point x, and um, yeah, any x value, if we choose the, a tiny, tiny distance away from that, we can then find another x value. Right, x plus a little bit more, uh, and the original x, and this h is just that little bit more, whatever that little bit more was in the horizontal. Given all that, uh, given an x and a function, and an h that we would choose to be really small, we can find, what would we find then? Slope secant line. <laughs> a slope of a secant line, beautiful. Secant, not tangent, right? Still going through two points on the graph, Right? And that slope is too much? What do, we, do we need to go back some more? Yeah. A little bit to where? To the, pig, to the pig arrow. To the pig arrow? Yes. Okay. I'll go back there, Ryan. Uh, you said it's secant line? What is the difference between secant line? Okay, secant, secant, line? secant line goes through two points. Okay. Right? One, two. And since we're using this other point, It'll always be like this, okay. this other point two, because that'll always be secant. But the, the closer P2 gets to P1, the closer the, the secant is to the tangent. Yeah. Okay. All right, so back to the, the pigtail thing. So here's what we have. Let me try to highlight as, as little as possible. We have a point and another point. Okay. This point we decided would be right there because we chose this x. Choose this x dictates where this point would wind up on the graph. Right? So that gives us x and f of x, an x and a y. Is that good? OK. Then we choose some other p2. Right? Any other point on the graph we could define as some distance away from the original x. Right? Can that be agreed? Any point anywhere on the x-axis, even over here, we could add a negative amount and, and go to the left. Right? So any other x value could be said to be h away from x. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Good? Okay. 
So we're gonna, again, we're going to choose a point, and we're going to let that point get closer and closer and closer. And the closer point one gets to point two, when, like when point two coincides with point one, the, the slope between those two points, where does that sound, would be the slope of the tandem. Yeah? If you were to have it like a tangent line and it just went through one point, wouldn't that make h zero? Well, you're getting a little bit ahead of me, but it's, it's a beautiful place to be. We'll be there in just a second. So we've got this point is x, comma f of x, x and y. This other x associated with this point here is h away, whatever h is. Okay. So we just call we call this x value x plus h, right? So this is where our our, our pig arrow is leading us. So this other point is x plus h. It's just x plus a little bit more. Then the y value of this point is this guy right here. That just comes from taking this value, putting it into the function, and seeing what comes out. Does that make sense? Okay. You just plug in whatever this is. So if this were 5, if x were 5, and h were 0 0.01, well, this would be how much? 5.01, right? It's just a new number. So this would be 5.01. We put in 5.0 into f, whatever that equation is, and then whatever happens when you put 5.01 into the function, that's what this is. Okay. So now we take that y value minus this y value, that's y2 minus y1, and we take this x value, x plus h, and we subtract this x value, just x, the original x that we chose. And then we had this cancellation happen and we just have h on the bottom. Okay. How was that, better? So uh, Connor just said, if the two points you know, meld together, and the, ten the secant line is now actually the same as the tangent line, then h would be what? Zero. h would be zero. We would want to have h go to zero. That's what we call the limit. Oh, the yeah. limit as h goes to zero of this. OK? So let's, let's just kind of highlight some things. This, it finds the slope between two points. The two points are x comma f of x and x plus h comma f of x plus h. So the slope between any two points you choose. Okay, We've just thrown in those letters and stuff because what we want to do is stay on x and then you know, let this h distance get smaller and smaller and smaller until p2 it just comes down and lands right on top of p1. OK. Do you just like, expect none of us to figure this out? Or like, what would happen if one of us figured this out when you like, find the slope of that one point? If you had found the slope, uh, and like if you had done all the stuff that I've done so far, because you need to have a function. You can't just have random points, not random, but discrete yeah. points, and, and be able to do that. It, it, I would have been blown away. I wouldn't have expected to come back with an actual answer. The, the answers that I expected were what Gavin came with, and he said, what if we just did this? Like an idea, just an idea of what to do, okay? Yeah, so that's you, like you got to there, that's what I was hoping you would do. Just some idea, I want your brains to have gone through just some process of thinking. What could we possibly do? And I think that, that the way Gavin said could work, the way you were saying averaging the two slopes, we can limit those things so that those two points that you're, you're essentially using two points, right? As they come closer and closer together, we get something very similar to this, right? It's just that this is probably the simplest way, as difficult as it might look, is the simplest way. Let's keep one point stationary, pick one point that moves, right? Quote unquote moves. And, uh, and let that distance go to zero. If we try to pick two that actually move towards it, that would have been more complicated, right? So not a bad idea, it's just this is what we're gonna go with. Um, are there any questions about that? Okay, might be a little bit of a question and let me um, put it to you this way. Uh, let's take this. Move it over here. The specific example we had was.
was for this equation. Okay? And let's do what Sarah said. We'll do it like down to two decimal places. So negative, or let's call it f of x, because that's what we've been using. f of x equals negative 12.54. Let's just round it to 0.4, or 0.54, x squared. Okay, there's the x squared right there, plus uh, 7.36x plus 1.02. Okay, it's bad, but it's not as bad as that is. This is all the combining stuff, isn't it? Combining stuff? Yeah, we're actually going to stop short of there. <coughs> so that's our f. f is, if it's, is this. Okay, so we're going to apply this idea to that, or at least set it up. Okay, and then we're going to see that we need something more. Um, or maybe we'll just use a, a, an easier, an easier, maybe easier than that. What do you say to that? Okay, we'll, we'll use an even easier function. We'll just make it up. Make up a much easier function. Okay. We'll just, let the function be. Can we just get rid of the decimals? What? Can we just get rid of the decimals? Oh. The tenth decimal. So um, Thirteen. Oh. Ah, we'll go even easier. We'll just do negative x squared um, plus two uh, x plus one. Okay. So we'll call that f of x. We'll just, we'll just forget about that guy right there for a moment. Well, maybe for a few days, actually. Uh, so there's the function. Well, any point on, on this, well, let's say this graph right here, this graph is going to look you know, something like uh, this. Okay. Any point on there, we could pick this one, x. We could pick some h distance, and this would be x plus h, and this point would be x comma uh, f of x, and this point right here would be x plus h comma f of x plus h. But let's say on this graph we want to know the slope, the velocity, whatever you want to call it, um, at x equals 2. So what's the slope at x equals 2. Well, we're just going to follow this idea here. Let's really nice plug stuff in. Okay. So if this describes any point on the graph, or any, or any y value on the graph, if we move over h, then our new f of x plus h is just going to be x plus h. Well, what does that mean? What are we going to do with x plus h? Oh, um, oh. x plus oh. h squared right. plus Right. Right. x plus h squared. 2 times x plus h. So negative x plus h squared plus 2 times x plus h plus 1. There's our f of x plus h, our f of x. Wait, what just happened right there? Uh, just took x, x plus h. Yeah. And put it in for every x. Oh, okay. Right there. <clears throat> well, it gets even a little easier because uh, x is a specific value. It's 2. Okay. So what's f of 2? Or how do we figure that out? We just take this, put it in there, right? So we got 2 squared is 4. So that's negative 4. Plus four plus one. zero one. one. Plus one. So f of two is one. Right? Wait, so this may seem like a dumb question, but um when you plug in two for x for a negative x squared, do you square it and then add the that the the will multiply by the negative no. negative? Or negative would be square. Negative Negative's outside two of the squaring operation. If I wanted it to be negative I would put parentheses around it. So it's, right now it's outside. It's, it's so negative, it's like negative one after the square. Two square, not yeah. Negative two square. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And 
f of 2 plus a little bit more, which we call h, would be negative 2 plus h squared plus 2 times 2 plus h plus 1. Just putting 2 plus h in for x. In there, in there. That's what it looks like. So we have f of x plus h, f of x. x is x, and x plus h is x plus h. So we can just do this right here. f of x plus h, that's gonna, the x is 2, so we just do negative 2 plus h squared plus 2 times 2 plus h plus 1. That's f of x plus h. That's what this is right here. Minus f of x. Well, x is 2, f of 2 is just a 1. Cancels out that one. That's going to happen a lot. Over h. Okay. And then what do we want h to do? We want the limit as h goes to zero. Does that seem like you want h to be as close to zero as possible? Is that really like your? Yeah. But it is going to like go to zero. And this is this is why we need what we're going to learn. Um, we're going to kind of back up from this question, pick up and scoop up all the stuff that we need to know before we can answer a question like this. Because here's what's going to happen. We're going to let h go to 0. We'd like to just say h is 0. Plug in 0 for h. Okay? Okay. That'd be easy enough. Here we get 2 squared. Here we get 2. That'd be 4. That'd be 4. But look what happens down here. What happens when you put in the 0 in the denominator? Can you do that? No. no. So what we need is a knowledge of limits, how limits work. What, like, what rules apply to limits, what we're allowed to do with limits, what we're not allowed to do with limits, all that kind of stuff, okay? Um, and we didn't get there, so we don't, I think I know what to do. We don't really have any homework. Though I think if I threw the homework at you, you'd do okay, but I don't wanna do that. Um, so we're gonna pick right up here, full speed, oh, yes. next time, okay? So, okay. you don't have any homework? Yeah! Woo! So, we will have next homework next time. Oh, yay! Yeah. 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 Yeah.